Welcome back to this series of Light Reading Executive Interviews. Terry Sweeney here with Light Reading, and joining me now is Jeff Jacob, Director of Hardware for IP Networks at Nokia. Jeff, thanks for joining us today for this. Thanks for having me here. Uh, Nokia has just launched its fifth generation of FP Silicon. Uh, the company has long focused on in-house silicon. I, I don't need to tell you that. Um, talk a bit about how this fits with the strategy. What, what are you guys trying to do with this? So we've spent about uh, two decades developing our FP Silicon. We just announced FP5. In those 20 years, IP networks really have emerged as essential to our lives. You know, IP TV, triple and quadruple play. They're also at the heart of a lot of 4G and 5G mobile transport networks. Our focus is really on service provider, where investment protection and longevity are really key points. You know, service provider investment cycles can last five to 10 years or more for a chassis. We have an excellent track record of quality and stability with FP Silicon, again, that spans nearly two decades of continuous evolution and investment protection. This was always focused on low total cost of ownership. With one chipset, we can cover high scale aggregation, edge, core, and peering markets. FP provides the silicon versatility and programmability that our customers like and want. Uh, so really for us, uh, everything just ties back to our FP5 launch tag of mastering the unexpected. So those are some pretty long development times and uh, obviously require Nokia to, to remain flexible and agile during th those periods. Um, why was this the right time to actually release this new generation of silicon? Good question. So uh, within IP routing, uh, we generally talk about platforms, features, and capabilities when they're ready for market. Our engineers yeah. and our test teams are really organized around that principle. When we introduced FP4, it was really revolutionary at the time. FP5 is very much evolutionary, where we took the next steps needed to bring what we see were the next big set of capabilities to market. What we delivered with FP5 was built on the innovation of FP4, plus with the right technology cycles uh, for aligning Nokia to go and uh, again, bring a lot of firsts to market. So these include uh, High density QSF PDD 800, 100 gig surges, next generation HBM memory, flow based encryption. These are all key things. Again, that was it was just the right time for all of them. Uh, plus, we I'd say we learned a lot from the pandemic. Service providers really they don't hope for the best; they prepare for the worst. Oh. So. Uh, this, in our view, really requires some extremes for performance, security, and reliability. FP5, like every generation before that, it's a network processor, which means it has a completely programmable data path. We can change table sizes, the number of TCAM lookups, the order of TCAM lookups, and really adjust the data path irrespective of how next-gen networking standards evolve. That versatility is really the reason why FP customers has stayed with us over many generations. Uh, Orange France is a great example of just one of those customers. So what we can offer both new and old uh, is really a clear and straightforward path to the future with cutting edge platforms that meet their asks for low power, more speed capabilities and security across a range of platforms scaling from 2.4 to 230 tera. I'm glad you mentioned FP4. It's of course still generating lots of traction with customers. Um, what does this next generation offer? So with FP4, we showed that operators can really get flexibility and capability without compromising on speed. FP5 really extends that even further. So the differentiators for FP5 for us are clear. Speed is nothing without predictable behavior and FP5 offers both increased capacity and performance. Added security and resiliency are the other major, major add-ons with FP5. Cyber attacks are not going away and are only increasing in scale and size. FP5 mm -hmm. delivers functions to address that. Uh, in addition to flow-based encryption. Uh, plus, we also offer the sustainability contribution of lower power, which means lower cost. We've been doing this for two decades and 
you know, within our product portfolio, we have the longest supported and upgraded routers across all vendors. So our experience with longevity and investment protection really can't be surpassed. FP5 is plus, in addition to that, 100% backwards compatible with no feature phasing. It's designed to allow for growth and progression without rip and replace. Um, another feature that you're touting is the lower power consumption. Um, tell us a bit about how you're accomplishing that. So with FB5, we're reducing power consumption by 75% while wow. constantly increasing capacity three times. And wow. we're doing this while maintaining the same power envelope compared to FP4. So overall, we're talking about FP5 power consumption on the order of 0.1 watts per gig typical, and that's full featured. And 0.1 watts per gig also includes encryption. So if you contrast that to lean core and merchant silicon, we're delivering exceptional capability and low power without the inherent trade-offs that come with each of those other silicon types. Now, the formula on how we did this involves many different aspects that build not only on our mechanical design, but combine that with power density optimization. Before we started with FP5, we did a lot of simulation of different configurations and capacities before finalizing on the go-to market plan with FP5. And really what you're seeing now is the fruit of that labor. By tuning ASIC capacity, ASIC packaging, CERTES, mechanical design, and cooling design, we're not only delivering really low power, but concurrently an ability to cool 800 gig coherent optics in all cages without having to run fans at max speed or de-stuff cages. It's low power consumption, full featured, fully buffered, with line rate memories everywhere, and a true ability to support coherent optics without compromise. Um, great, great context, Jeff. Um, in conclusion, take us out with um, a, a summary of, of how you see um, Nokia differentiating its own approach with silicon from other vendors. Sure. So uh, speed and power are indeed key drops in all next generation network decisions, but this is typically where a lot of conversations end. We, however, believe that capabilities matter. We believe that you should not have to get dumb to go fast. Every generation of FP Silicon has consistently provided many industry firsts, and we continue to build on that with the release of FP5, combining really low power consumption on top of all FP5 platform and value add, we continue to focus really on our no compromise design philosophy. Jeff, thanks for the update on FP5 Silicon. I appreciate you joining us for this light reading executive chat. Great, thanks very much, Terry. We've been talking with Jeff Jacob, Director of Hardware for IP Networks with Nokia. This has been Terry Sweeney for light reading. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.